think the camera angle is a bit skewer today. Um, that'll do. How are we all? It is Wednesday and I am back in the UK, back to, to normal, no longer skiing, no longer on the slopes, which is a shame because that was a lot of fun. Um, but I'm back with my weekly um, Wednesday live and I have rainbow techniques for you today and I think you're going to like it because I don't have one, two, I have multiple cards for you tonight, multiple rainbow cards. Hello, great to see you. Hi from me and Bella, oh my goodness, that is so sweet. I hope Bella's just sitting there like, ooh, crafting. <laughs> um, just a heads up that I am slightly ill, as always, with sinus sin sin um, sinusitis. I keep, I don't know how to say it. So if I'm a little bit sniffly, I do apologise. I'm going to try my best. Um, I've got some loads of fun techniques, um, all rainbow themed today. So I'm really excited because rainbows just make me happy. I'm going to be using, oh, thanks, um, Alia, about the heart checks. It's just um, basically with all of my asthma, they've said my consultant wanted me to get a little bit checked out um, with my heart just to make sure that there was nothing more sinister. I won't find out for a couple of weeks, um, probably quite a few, <laughs> like three or four, um, but I'm it, I'm sure it'll be fine. I'm staying on the side of positive until I know anything else. <laughs> So, um, like I said, I'm very sniffly, I do apologise. Um, but I have got some great rainbow techniques we're going to do in a manner of ways. So I've got an absolute ton of stuff on my desk right now. I'm going to tell you the colours we're working with today. I've decided, so when I do anything craft related, I like to stick to, um, if I'm doing things in, in odd numbers, so threes and fives. So I've picked five colours today to work with in terms of rainbow techniques. So it's not quite the amount you would see in a real rainbow, but it's a good um, like variation. So I'm starting with a nice yellow. We're going for Daffodil Delight. A really bright orange. I'm going for Pumpkin Pie. It's a bright green, but it's not the brightest green we do, but we're going for Old Olive because it's kind of... It's a green that doesn't take over the page, so it'll work really well with these techniques. And um, we're going to go for a bright blue in, in Bermuda Bay. Ugh, difficult to say. And um, we're also going to go for a rich razzle green. So one of the really special things about all five of these colours is not only do I have them in ink, in pens, I also have them in my blends and I also have them in my watercolour pencils. I also have all of the card colours in it as well. So this means we're going to get a really nice range um, and see the colours used in different ways. So just to give you a little heads up, we're going to be making five different cards today. Now some of them are going to be quite simple and some of them are going to be a little bit more fancy. But I'm just going to show you the different ways that you can use rainbows in your crafting projects. So hopefully I've got the um, laptop up working so I'm going to be able to read your comments as I go along. Um, please pipe up if you think, if you've got some good ideas, um, <laughs> don't tell me with this blends. Sophie, I'm sure you're going to have to cave at one point because these blends are beautiful. Um, today we're going to be using, I'm trying to make sure I'm telling you what we're using in case you've got it and you want to craft along. We're going to be using the Ep Epic Celebration, which is one of the celebration stamp sets, which means you can get this one for free. I have to say, when I first saw Epic Celebrations, I kind of immediately thought, boy, because there's a guitar, there's some converse, and there's some earphones, which is really bad because like, I don't know why I really thought these were like male, it was a male set, um, but I'm going to use it today, so this is the set, the different, the different elements, I'm going to use it today with really nice bright colours, so it would really be suitable for anyone. Um, different age ranges and different genders. I think it's quite a universal set when you actually start to play with it. Pink Converse. You see, Sophie, I don't wear Converse, so Converse didn't appeal to me in the slightest, but I've got a lot of friends who wear Converse, like live in them, so I really should have thought about that, um, but I didn't. So what else do you need? So I'm using blends and I'm going to use watercolour pencils and I am going to use Memento ink because of the the alcohol blends. I'll try and let you know going on if there's anything else you need. 
I really don't know what happened, what's happened to that. It's got something stuck in the bottom, like rubber. Okay, so I'm going to have a really hor horrible moment where I'm going to switch the camera around. Um, so please stay with me just for a second. Oh, you live in yours, you have bright orange ones. I need a picture of those. Like, my husband loves anything orange. So that's great. I'd be one second. Okay, so you can basically just see my laptop. Let's move that out of the way. Okay, what can you see? Oh, I realised I've tilted the camera, um, so that's probably really awful for everyone. Okay, I need to work out if that's better. Can anyone give me some hearts and stuff if that is a better angle for, for you all? Or can you lit you can literally just see my laptop. Okay, that's really frustrating. Okay. Let's move this out of the way. Let's try that. Okay. So is that um better for everyone now? Okay. Let me know if that's not great and I will move it again. Okay, I see hearts, so hopefully that means we're all good. I really hope I would need that. So, to start with, I'm going to make a one of the more simple cards we're going to do. And this is one of the new little notelets that we've got. So let's see what this is called. This is the Whisper Wrap. Whisper white and narrow note cards and envelopes. So these are really cute and so on. Um, one of the things I recommend doing when you're working with rainbows is to back things in black. I say that slowly um, because it's quite hard to say, but a tongue twister. I find if you really want to focus the attention onto colours, then just simply highlighting things in black just means that the eye is naturally really drawn to the brightness. So let's quickly measure this. Okay, so these are four and a half by two and a half. So I'm going to cut to four and three eighths by two and three eighths. Now you may notice I'm keeping that so it's got a really small border. That's because it's already a small card and I don't want to take away too much. Which means our white base is now going to be four and two eighths by two and two eighths. So the, the card that I'm working with now is fairly small. It's just gonna go across like that. And it just means that we've got this small pop of light, bright, um, black, which is really gonna highlight the colors we're using. So I'm just gonna pop open all of my ink pads. So this is possibly um, the one of the the, the, the most simple, simple way of creating a rainbow effect. And it is literally just stamping in different colours. Now for a long time when I first stamped, I literally only used black. So when I found stamping up and started using colours, it was a bit of a revolution to me because all of a sudden my colours could my cards could be full of bright bright colours and I wasn't relegated to black and then maybe gold at Christmas. So I'm going to use this tiny spot in the stamp set here. So this is not one of the feature images, but this is just going to create a nice little rainbow technique. Now what I want to do with this stamp is create a bit of a wave. So let's just kind of work out, so I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so I'm going to do each colour twice. I'm literally just going to dab some ink on, do some spots, and then do a second row of spot. Now I could use my stamp and scrub, but I forgot to get it out. So I'm just going to stick with good old baby wipes. Even though a stamp and scrub is so much easier, but oh well. So, I'm just going to alter the angle of the stamp as I go along, just so that I can fit more um, spots on the page. 
So maybe I counted a little bit wrong because I think actually it would be easier to fit. Oh no, that's great. So as you can see, we've just got this nice little rainbow effect going along the card. It really, really is that simple. And then what I'm going to do next is, I actually didn't get them out, is grab my pens and I'm going to take one of the sentiments and colour this in um, a rainbow effect as well. So let's go for, because you're awesome. You're awesome. So I'm just going to pop that just along, yeah, just there in the bottom right corner. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take the matching pens that I've already used so they match with the inks and then pull it in directly onto the stamp to create the same effect as the pattern. And this helps just draw the eye because it's going to be the same um, colour pattern. So when I said I was going to make five cards, I'm making five cards but I know I'm showing you six ways to make a rainbow. So I need to start with the A and then pumpkin pie and it's fine just to go over these just a little bit just to have a kind of a little blend point. So when I colour in, even on the stamps, even though it will still be wet and it will remain wet for a while, I just kind of blow on it a little bit. And then I'm just going to stamp it down. And hopefully, there we go, this has just created an even, like, adding to the rainbow effect. So I just need to stick this down. So I am checking, so if you've got any questions or anything, um, or comments, maybe you think a different colour combination would work better. Who watching doesn't like rainbows? I don't think I know anyone who doesn't like a rainbow, but there's always time. Okay, so that is the card effectively done. Now this is a really cute card if you have children to pop this into like a lunchbox or something or maybe like your partner's lunchbox. Because I'm obsessed with Wink of Stella I'm just going to add a little bit to a couple of these just to pick up a little bit of glitter and make it a little bit sparkly. And a little bit on some of these just for a little bit of sparkle because how can we not? I actually think that this needs a few diamantes just kind of mulling around. Okay, so that is my first rainbow card. Nice and simple. So the second one I'm going to do is going to follow the same simplicity um, and instead we are going to use card. So I've grabbed a sheet of card in all of the colours that I'm using plus the black and this time rather than stamp um, in colours we're going to stamp in black but against this beautiful card. So this is going to be a longer a long card I just need to do a quick measurement just to see how big this stamp is so um, when I'm gonna cut the piece of card slightly bigger than the stamp and have the stamp going along the card so we need something that is two and a half by two so I'm gonna make it two and a half by two and a half just to keep things simple and that just means that I'm going to, I don't think I need these ones anymore. So it's going to be quite a long card. 
It's a two and a half by two and a half. Oh my, is that even going to be too long? That would be twelve and a half. So we, we're going to have to make it a little bit smaller than that. Otherwise, I don't have card long enough. Okay, let me just rethink that little plan. I'm going to use the guitar instead because that is like one and a half. So we're going to do one and a half by three and a half. Because otherwise this just wouldn't fit. Yeah, there we go. So sometimes it's good to just check your measurements. <laughs> So I don't think I'm getting any comments and I don't know if that's because maybe the thing isn't working or maybe um, you're all watching intently. So out of the colours I've picked here tonight, which is your favourite? Mine is Bermuda Bay and my nails are actually that colour today. I wanted something really bright after being in the snow. <laughs> As you can see I'm cutting all of the pieces first and then I will cut the black card to go over it to go under it sorry so the cards will be laid like this and I'm gonna stamp directly onto each piece so if it's three and a half I want it to be Maybe I want it to be four. Let's see. I don't know whether it'll look a little bit lost at four. Like maybe it needs to be a little bit. Let's see. I think maybe I like that, the fact that it's just a little bit bigger. And one and a half is five, six. Let's just try laying it. So I want quite a lot of space in between them, I've decided. Okay, so I need it to be about nine and a half. So I could have done the maths then, but it's late, I just wanted to guesstimate. So I'm going to take the stamp and I'm just going to take Memento Black ink. If I can see it, I seem to have put it down somewhere. Maybe I won't take Memento. completely lost my ink so I'm gonna grab a different one I've just grabbed my basic black ink which is just another black ink it's just this one is alcohol based so I couldn't use it with my blends if I wanted an optimal result so this ink pad, um, because it is an alcohol based, has a slightly different pad, but that's fine. Sometimes you just need to press this a little bit harder, that's all. So I'm just going to stamp all of these central. Now, if I had a stampamajig, which I do, a stamposaurus, um, this could be done super fast. But I'm not going to upset you all and show it yet, as soon as you can't get it, because I think that's just me. But know that it's coming in a few months and it will make this job even easier. So again this card's quite simple but sometimes that simplicity is just really effective. So I'm going to fold this card base in half and somehow I've measured that incorrectly so let's see why I didn't cut. Okay so somehow I have cut this card wrong strange. I've cut this side wrong as well. 
I'm just going to start again because I honestly to be honest, do not know how I've managed to cut that, cut that piece of card so wrong. Is it okay to blame it on the card and say it's not my fault? I think so. Okay, so I need to cut this at nine and a half again. Okay, so I can now lay this down. So rather than using a bone folder, just using the bottom of the glue, real life crafting. So I think that needs something behind it just to bring it all together. So what I'm gonna do, in fact, any suggestions? What do we think can bring this together? Just a little bit more. I think I know what I'm gonna do, but it's interesting to think to hear what you all do. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut a one and a half strip of white card and see if this works. And I am simply gonna use this as a back and go all the way around. So I really think that the comments aren't working because I can't, I haven't read anything. Okay, I just pulled that off screen a little bit. Okay, I think that finishes it off just that little bit nicer. And what I would do here is I would have um, the sentiment inside the card because sometimes I think you don't need a sentiment on the front of the card yeah so I'm just gonna try exiting and just see if um, on the thing okay so Sophie I can see some comments now saying you're here that's good it must be working. Maybe it just temporarily had a few issues. Perfect. So I am going to stick on my um, elements with some dimensionals. I do have some. I panicked then, thinking maybe I didn't have any with me. So I'm going to put stick three on the backs of each of these. Somebody has drawn a smiley face on my embellishment and I don't feel like I can take that one off. So one tip I'm going to share with you is when you're doing something like this and you're sticking them along in a row, I find it easier to start with the two outsides and then work my way in. I'm just going to lay them on top though so I can get a good idea of placement. So I don't want my spacing to be incorrect and that's the one problem with using dimensionals is if your placing is wrong you're a bit stuffed oh so if you're just quietly writing an, an order list and watching good plan what is on your order list blends <laughs> okay so stuck down one and then I will go to the opposite end I just find that that means you tend to not have the spacing issues as much yep. so I think the um the back of this actually reminds me of the I, I don't know what it's called the the neck of the guitar you can quite clearly tell I'm not a guitar player And stick that one down. So again, this is a really simple way of creating a rainbow effect because you're letting the card do all of the work for you. You're simply just placing it down. And there we go. Now again on this one I think I want a little bit of diamantes. I'm just not sure where I want them. 
Mm. Let's see. I don't know if guitars would have something shiny there, but we're going to go for it. I like the look. I'm feeling very sparkly today. I feel like everything needs a little bit of bling. So this is another tip of mine. If you're using the diamantes, I find put your finger on it, drag it down, it sticks to your finger and you can just stick it. I'm not one to use tweezers. I cannot use them to save my life. Okay, so that is a super duper quick, easy way um, to create a rainbow. So there's two rainbows there. One just using stamps and ink and one using card. Which is your favourite so far? I just need to fold that down a little bit more. Do we have any favourites? I think this one is my favourite so far. Oh, Sophie, oh my goodness, four weeks, two days until the wedding. That is scary. That's come across so, come around so fast. Okay, so I'm now going to show you a another card to, to do. We're gonna, uh, going to use some blends. So I pre-stamped out my earphones, first of all, simply just because I wanted the Memento ink to just dry for a few minutes, dry for about 10-15 minutes. I find it just creates like an optimal um, for the blending. Sometimes if you stamp immediately and then colour, I find it can bleed just a little bit. So I'm just going to start off by colouring. I've taken both colours. Rather than do any real blend, I'm going to just use the two, the light and the dark, to contrast against each other. So I'm going to pick sections and colour them in the light and the dark. I'm also going to use the light and grey just to contrast with everything. So I am colouring this section. Like I have headphones but I don't have any fancy headphones so they're just really simple. So I'm not really sure if um, I'm colouring all of the correct bits, but we're going to go for it. If you have headphones and you're a bit of a headphone buff and I'm colouring in something that should be a specific colour, just, just let me, just let me go. I'm sure it'll be okay. So, then the, actually I'm going to colour that bit in. And then the final bits are just going to be done in grey. So with the blends, one of the tricks is to not go too close to the edge because that's a quick way to have it bleed. I'm going to colour in all of the grey in one go. The thing about these pens is they do spread. So if you colour it in um, quite gently and don't go too close to the edge, it spreads out itself anyway. Especially when you're really, really blending and trying to get vibrancy of colour, don't um, just go near the edge, it will bleed out. It will um, fill to the edge, should I say. Unfortunately for you guys, when you're watching, colouring is really therapeutic for me, so it makes me go quiet. <laughs> okay, so the point here is I'm going to colour the headphones in so that they make a rainbow just by using each individual colour. Now if you've noticed that I've separated them out, this is because I'm going to use one of our new punches to cut these out. Um, oh, I've done that wrong, the wrong one there. Whoopsie daisy, but it's fine because I'm going to go over it in a darker colour. I'm going to use a new punch to cut these out, which is going to create the rainbow effect really nicely for me. I'm a big fan of punches. Punches make life easy. Hello, Dillian. It's good to know that comments are working. 
So Gillian, today we are making rainbow effects. Yeah. So I missed a little bit. Let's just go back and fill that in. If you want vibrant colours, more vibrant colours, you just need to keep going back over um, and you will get the really dark, vibrant, or, or bright, not necessarily dark, colours. I'm keeping this fairly simple for now um, and just going for the two tones. Because the thing with these pens is they don't need to be complicated. You don't need to spend hours getting the technique right. Um, and making them perfect you can just have them as nice the one tone or two tone images okay and I think they do headphones actually in all of these different colors mine are just black that's because I'm not a big music person so I am quite tight when it comes to buying headphones. Oh, Dillian, I'm glad you like the colour combination. I really like it. I love rainbows, though, so I think it's quite striking. So I am nearly finished. I did think about trying to colour these in ahead of time, but then I like to see people's process, so I figured I would do the same. I think my voice is getting more and more croaky as I keep talking. I'm going to be a frog in a minute. So how is everyone's week? Has it been as eventful as mine with all the different cardiology appointments that I've had? Oh, I forgot to colour that colour in again. Let's just go. So colouring for me is like one of the most therapeutic things. If I'm ever really stressed, I tend to just do a little bit of colouring and then I feel better about the world. I did get um, a great gift from my lovely friend Lydia once and that was a notebook that actually was just full of colouring. So it looked like you were making notes when actually you were just sitting there colouring away your heart's content. Well I'm glad Jillian your week was pretty boring compared to mine. <laughs> I think I would have preferred a boring week. Although it was really really cool to see my heart um, through the ultrasound. That was really fun. Although I don't think it was fun for everyone who, asked, who just thought it was a pregnancy scan. Because disclaimer I am definitely not pregnant. That was my heart if you saw the scan. And I think all of my family who saw the scan, I had to let them know that if I <laughs> if I ever was pregnant, I would tell them. <laughs> I wouldn't let them find out via Facebook. Okay, so we have nearly finished the colouring. And we've only got another letter of colouring to go. <laughs> So colouring done, but I hope you saw how easy it was to just colour in. Ooh, Christina, you have to have an echocardiogram. Well, it's it's really easy. I mean, it's slightly uncomfortable because they have to press the ultrasound scanner in quite a lot. But I mean, it's like marginally discomfort. It is uncomfortable. Like, it's the kind of discomfort if you ever get your nails done and they're filing your nails, it's kind of like, oh, like, ooh. So, all I'm doing now is I'm punching this out, and I have a feeling I might have just punched that out a little bit too close. No, I didn't. Look at that. Perfect. So, all I've done here is punch out all of them, and that's because we're going to create a pattern. Now, I think I, I thought I was prepared and cut out the shape that I needed for this. But maybe not. So I'm just going to cut something that's 
four inches by, let's see, five inches. And then I'm gonna layer these onto my card in a pattern. I think I'm gonna go like, maybe like that. Hmm, what do I think? Or maybe, No, I don't like it that way. I'm going to stick it to this way, I think. And have them go across in a rainbow pattern. Now, where on the other cards I've had the black directly behind the white, this time I'm going to stick with white on white, but have a black background. Sometimes it's really good to highlight the black, and sometimes it's fine to just distract it just a little bit. Now, is that going to be big enough? I think maybe I'm going to need another piece of card. Oh, no, it is perfect. Would you look at that? It's like I knew. Okay, so I did that by five. Oh, silly Billy, that needs to be... I've now made it just slightly too small. I'm going to grab another piece of black card. Because it needs to be just over eight. It needs to be eight and a half. Eight and a quarter. Or eight and a half. It needs to be eight and a half because we're scoring at four and a quarter. Oh, let's cut to five first of all. Score at four and a quarter. So again, I'm not focusing um, on sentiments. I'm really focused on the rainbow effect. So Jillian said, "Glad I'm not. I'm not the only one that ones like that." <laughs> yeah, me too. So here we have the effect, and I'm going to stick the white down directly onto the black card. But I'm going to pop these up on dimensionals. And I think I'm going to add even more diamantes. I'm really loving these diamantes tonight. So these are just going to need two each. Oh, I can't take off the one with a smiley face. And again, I'm going to lay them down first, just to make sure that I get good placement. I want the rainbow to go, yeah, and just like that. Okay. So here I'm going to stick the middle one down first, because these all um, touch next to it. And there we go. Now I love this punch because it kind of creates a bit of a honey frame effect. And that's quite satisfying to see. <laughs> I like things that follow quite a nice neat pattern. It's so hard to talk and, con and while you're sticking things down, it's like that tension when you really want something to get to be stuck neatly. Then I'm going to grab some diamantes and embellish it slightly. I'm not sure whether I should put the diamantes around or directly on. What do we think? The diamantes could. Let's stick with the small ones go there or they could 
just go around. I'm going to go with, let's just see. I'm going to go with a round the card. And one in there. So here we have just the stamps and ink to create a rainbow using just card to create a rainbow and finally using the blends and then a honeycomb pattern to kind of have a follow me around rainbow. So that's three ways to make a rainbow and let's see. So I am going to do another small card and oh, did I get one ready? No, I didn't. So this one again is going to be really simple. So I need a small card and I'm going to get a punch of paper, sorry, a scrap of paper. And I'm going to take the pens, only the darkest this time. And I'm going to take the fat end and do a couple of scribbles. A uh, couple of scribbles in each colour. And then I'm going to stamp over this. And then um, punch it out. So we don't need to worry about it being neat around the edge because that is going to be punched out after. We're just looking to have the effect of the rainbow. I'm going to go for the converses. Stamp that down. And I am using the two inch punch. And hopefully I've coloured it enough. Oh, it's just me that slightly. And I'm going to use the Starburst punch, which is again another one of my new favourites. And punch it out. Which colour shall I go for? I am going to go for green because it's the middle colour. And it will just balance the card out. Grab another few dimensionals. And stick this to the base. This is then going to go on the front of my card. But let's see, what else does it need? So I think here it is going to have, let's see, where's this left? Have that there and then I'm going to have, maybe make that like a metal. So all I've done is taken a strip of card that I had on the desk, I'm just going to fold it in half and I'm going to chip away um, and um, do points on the edge of these. So cut in the middle, to the side, to the side. Just get rid of the excess. And have that stuck to the back of my card with a dimensional. Then another two dimensionals on here. And I think I'm gonna have the sentiment, you're awesome. Which I've already got out. So. Oh, Gillian, you're having heart palpitations with my open ink pad. Oh, I'm so sorry. I tend to <laughs> leave things open quite a while. I'm not a clean crafter. So if you slightly off center, I'm going to, I'm going to live with that. So if you are a tidy crafter, my desk is probably stressing you out as well. I am not tidy. It takes all of the effort I have to ever be tidy. Okay, so there we have our fourth 
way of doing the rainbow, which is literally, I'm going to close it for you, Gillian. Um, you'd end up setting your card on it. Well, to be fair, I've done that before, but I say every mistake is just an opportunity for creativity <laughs> because every time I make a mistake, I find that I have to really try hard because I'm lazy. I don't want to recreate what I've done. I want to find a way of fixing it. So I have one more way of creating a rainbow and it's quite similar to what we've already done. It's just a different technique. So I really liked this card and I'm going to replicate it in a similar way, just in a smaller scale. So this time what we're going to do is, maybe not, maybe I'm just going to do this again, but with a different technique. Let's move these out of the way. So what size is this? I think it was three and a half. So three and a half and then we need five one and a halves so this technique is going to be really easy and it's it's the lazy way to pull out I'm going to call it so I am going to use my um, basic black because I'm going to use water pencils now and I'm just going to use the guitar again. So Gillian, it's so weird watching this in mirror. I am not tidy. They make fun of me in class because I have to keep telling them to close the pads. Yeah, I forget that it's all reversed. There is a way to unreverse it, but I'm I'm not technical enough for that. Uh, my classes, I they tend to be um, they work in their own time. So I don't think I've ever had to tell anyone off for keeping the pads open, but. I think that they last open, they, they don't dry out, so I think I'm pretty lazy. I probably should tell them more. Okay, so I'm going to take the pens and then this is a really easy way to colour and get some nice effect. You are going to want to make sure that when you do what I'm about to show you, you, make sure you have a pencil sharpener simply because if it breaks you can just sharpen the pen. And all I'm going to do is quite harshly colour the edge of the, the guitar. So I really should have let my ink dry just a few minutes because I can see already that it's not quite dry, which means my pencil has picked up on it and is just spreading the ink. So I'm just going to go around the top. Okay, so sorry about that, the video, my internet, I think, crashed a little bit, but it should now be back. Hopefully it is now back. So all I'm doing is going around the image, quite harsh, put a lot of pressure on the pencil, so that I've got a really dark image, a really bright bit of colour all the way around. Okay, good, I seem to be back. So, no idea what happened then. We have really good internet as well. So you you want this to be dark. I mean, how I normally colour is like that. You would barely see it. But here we're putting a lot of pressure to create a nice, um, bright edging. It's hard. For me, I have to hold it really close to the, the tip if I'm going, if I'm putting pressure on it. This is where I do normally to get a really nice light pattern. Now with this technique, you literally can stop now. So you could have this just really bright, stark um, edging and just leave it completely as that because it's just a little splash of colour. So sometimes when we're adding colour to cards, we can get carried away and think we need to put a lot of different colours in but we can literally just put like this small amount of splash and that in itself creates the effect I'm gonna add use one of the blender pens instead and 
create a slightly softer edging but you could leave it like this and I think this does look quite effective I just like the um, more subtle effects Okay, so I'm just going to grab a blender pen and like I say, you could leave it completely like that. What I'm going to do is just blend out slightly the colour. Now because I didn't leave this to dry, it might smudge a little bit. I would recommend if you do it, just leaving it maybe for 10-15 minutes or just dry heat embossing it. And all I'm doing is, I'm not worrying about going into the white space, I'm leaving the white space as is. I'm just creating a little bit of a softer effect, getting rid of the, some of these harsh lines that I've created when being so um, hard with the pencil. And this just blends all in. You could go all the way around and create um, more of a watercolour image. I'm looking for that white space though, I actually want the white space on the card. So there we go. And this is why I quite said that this is quite a lazy technique. I don't mean lazy offensively, I just mean like it's a really nice, easy technique. You could do this while just chilling watching the telly, just if you need a little bit of crafting release after a hard day. But it is really effective, especially when we pop it against the black card after this. because it will just pop. So I didn't clean my pen well enough then, so that's a little bit blue. Whoops, it easy. Learn from my mistakes. Okay, there we go. All of my guitars colored in. I should have grabbed a second black sheet because I'm gonna need another one now. And what I'm gonna do here again is the same size as I did before what that was, save me measuring twice. So I cut it to eight inches wide and let's see, nine and a half long and then I'm going to score it four inches. Now this time I'm not going to have the white um, centre, but I do want something. So I think I'm again going to go with the green because it's the middle colour of the guitars which will just add some balance to the card or in theory that's what it should do anyway so I'm just going to stick this section down I cut that wrong slightly cockeyed cutting. It's definitely not the machine, it's definitely user error. Okay. I'm gonna get a new piece because that is I have not I am not cutting straight tonight. I'm gonna blame it on tiredness. Because it has been a long old week. Okay, so that's now straight. There we go. Whoops. I just dropped a punch then. That's what that big bang was. I forgot to cut it widthways, lengthways, but that's fine. That's what we have scissors for. Okay, so I'm gonna layer these down again. Do you know what? I really don't like that. 
what I'm going to do instead, because that is just not pleasant for me, is I'm going to cut out little strips and back each one of these because I do not like the look that I've got there. So I'm going to do one and one five eighths by three and five eighths. And that will just back each one just slightly. I think that looks so much more appealing to the eye for this card. What do you think? Am I just being pedantic? So again, just cutting five, one and five eighths, three and five eighths, just to create a little bit of backing to make these pop just a little bit more. I didn't like the appearance of what we had. for about an hour which seeing as we're on our fifth card this is quite it's a lot of crafting done now let's just check that all of this fits so that would be upsetting if it didn't fit now found perfect they all fit so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna have these layered flat and stick them onto their counterparts as so I think that little pop of color just finishes it off the green strip just didn't really work it didn't work for me Jillian said, agree. Flip sake, fat fingers, mine, not yours. That's funny. I have actually really skinny fingers, so getting my wedding ring was quite difficult. I had to get it adjusted like twice. And it has to, it went below the size that the shop actually did. And they had to take, spend it away, I don't know. They, it was somewhere extra they sent it away to. Because it had to go down so small. And actually, if I get cold, it's too big for me, but they wouldn't put it down any further. Okay, so that is... Those are stuck to their backing. And now just to stick them onto the card. Again, I'm not worrying about sentiments, especially because now I've got... Actually, I'm going to put a sentiment inside this card because I've got that green base. Again, starting with the outside first and working my way in. I find if I try and go along um, in order, then they always random um, widths between the two. So I'm going to do the two outsides and the middle. And then these two should just naturally fit in the right place. Oh, Sophie, thank you. Um, blending is really easy. But I will do a video on the team page for blending if you want. It's mainly about patience. Okay, so that is the outside. I wasn't planning on doing this, but since I made a bit of a boo-boo inside, I'm just going to stick. I'm just going to stamp inside. that out and 
rather than um, back it, because I don't want to make the inside of the card too thick, I'm just going to roll the punch out in ink, which will just mean the edges are all inked up. If you do it at a slight angle, you should be able to pick up ink all the way around the edge. And I'm going to stick this directly in the middle, which is about there, roughly. And ooh, stick my sentiment. And then it looks like the inside of my card was done on purpose, rather than accident. I could write their little message here, rather than a complete whoopsie daisy. Okay, rather than a bone fold on the bottom of the glue. Um, I've got some glue on the front of the card. I'm just going to use my adhesive remover. And there we go. I actually think I'm going to leave this one without diamantes. So, here we have... Let's make sure you can see all of this. Five different ways of using the using the rainbow on a card. So I, I'm not actually sure which one's my favourite anymore. Can we see all of these? Are all of these on the screen? I've no longer got it working on my um, laptop. So. <laughs> what do we think? Which ones are favourites? I think this one maybe is my favourite now. The one that I did last. Now, obviously with your envelopes you could spruce them up as well and you could add rainbows onto the front of the, the envelopes. So I think my two favourites are these two. I actually really like the white on white and just the gradual effect. But then I actually really like this one and the fact that the message is inside like that. <laughs> Oh, thanks, Jillian. You like the last one? Yeah, I think this one is is up there with mine. So, I hope you enjoyed watching the Rainbow Projects. To let you know, next week on Wednesday, um, I'm planning on doing a two-hour craft class. It's going to be live on the page. I'm going to put out the materials I'm needing um, just after either just after now just after this or straight at um, or tomorrow morning so if you want to order the projects along then you can craft the projects with me next Wednesday is Valentine's Day if I did my maths correctly um, the projects aren't gonna be like what I would call stereotypically Valentine type projects um, it's just gonna be on Valentine's Day because that's what day Wednesday is so I'll pop the project, the um, items needed, if you um, want to craft along. And I'll let you know if we're using a celebration or not. I can't remember right now. I know it's using the gorgeous um, red and pink paper. Because that paper is just so divine, I can't stop using it. And I hope you enjoyed this. I'd love to see your rainbow creations. So if you're inspired now to go make rainbows, please post a picture of what you've made. And I will... Oh, I'm going to turn the camera back up. So, I will um, be back next Wednesday and hopefully later this week with, I think I've got another project coming out this week. So, thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a lovely evening. Goodbye.